Hello, everybody. Screen's always tricky. Uh, my name is Daniel Young. I'm the owner and founder of Adapted Perspective and the Adapted Perspective channel, where I help you make your dreams a reality. And yes, if you've seen my videos before, that is a new why. And it's housed to the front where it belongs. So the the why is the mission statement. So why is that about dreams and not about financial freedom? Because we all have different dreams and all those dreams are finance-based. I can make this only about investing, right? I can make it only about strategy. But that doesn't talk about why I'm investing or why you're investing. So believe me when I say we're going to talk about investing, we're going to talk about strategy, but knowing why you're taking the time to invest in your learning and improve your investment strategy is important. Uh, if you don't know, you're just wasting time and money, which isn't helping you accomplish those dreams now, is it? So if you've seen any of my past videos, you understand I love strategy and targeted strategy. Now, that awareness is key because I'm going to continue to sift these financial memes using our investment strategies, along with some everyday down-to-earth common sense. So the reminders, this is an unedited video. Who knows what you hear as I film these in my house? Uh, it, I've got a thunderstorm going outside. Well, I don't have a thunderstorm going outside. There is a thunderstorm going outside, and that typically makes our cats a little stir-crazy. So they are currently running the house. Uh, if I show our strategy of closed-end funds, I'll briefly explain the system, but I, I really don't plan on doing it this video. Uh, disclaimers, see the description for the full disclaimers. Uh, the only one I'll mention here is that I am not a financial advisor. I am a financial strategist, keyword again. Uh, and as I make these videos, please know that I'm not out to slander anybody. Uh, I'm interested in separating the good from the bad when it comes to financial advice, because none of us want bad financial advice as we navigate our finances. So let's get into this. Let me share a screen, maybe share several screens. So this is the meme list. So this is my uh, Pinterest board. If you so I'll go to the top, this is my Pinterest board. It's got pretty much the same background on, on every platform. And inside this meme board at the very bottom is this pin, which looks like this. And you can see you can see my tag and you, you can see my notes. Now, savings challenges. The reason why I say it's shitty advice, the reason why I say it's they don't help you is because this outlines somebody's savings some someone's savings challenge, but I honestly don't know if it's real data, okay? And two, there's no strategy here. Like the strategy is let's save 20 grand. But if you look at the data entered in the spreadsheet, so I, I get paid twice a month. Uh, my wife gets paid twice a month. I, most people I know get paid either once a month or twice a month. I don't know anybody that works, or I don't know anybody that gets paid weekly and I for sure don't know anybody who's saving this much money weekly. So the first month alone, they're saving $900. That's amazing. Like our, our budget will, our budget works every month. We habitually save more money the three months following Christmas, just based on general expenses and Christmas, even despite us saving or pre-saving for Christmas, spending that much money at Christmas typically makes us all a little more gun shy on what we're, what we're spending overall. Plus January and February, even March are not huge electricity months because it's more heat. So it's more natural gas. It's cheaper than electricity. Um, so our budget will save this much money in general. But if you look at the difference between the first month and the next month, that's over a thousand dollars. If you look at that month compared to the next month, that's twelve hundred dollars. So that every week they're saving more money, but they're saving eight hundred dollars a week by the end of the year. I mean, one, that's talent. Like if this is your budget, that's impressive. 
But this is a fictitious budget to me because I know of nobody who's doing this. And savings challenges sound nice. Like we're going to do a savings challenge. Okay. How much money do you save at the end of every month? hundred bucks, $20,000 seems daunting. Like so far past impossible on the hundred dollars you save a month that it's just laughable. But even if, like we can play the if game, right? If this, if that, we can play the if game. So playing the if game, we'll say this is someone's actual budget and they save 20 grand. The strategy here is that they save 20 grand. You don't actually know the strategy post this. And if they're saving this in their bank, they're getting at best half a percent of interest a year versus if you're offloading this into somebody else's high yield account, now you're making 7% a year. So you don't know where this goes. Most people think of savings, they just put it in their bank, end of story. But I mean, gosh, if you're not offloading it into a high yield account, you're losing at least six and a half percent, at least. So the other reason I say it's bad advice is you don't know their strategy. Saving money just to save money doesn't help you anymore. This is not our parents' economy. This is not our parents' Federal Reserve. This is not our parents' anything. So if you're playing today's game by your parents' standards, you are going to be blown out of the water. Inflation is 4%. So just based on saving this in your bank, at the most, your bank is paying you a half percent. If you believe the Federal Reserve, which I have a really hard time believing the Fed these days, inflation is a good 4%. If you believe the Fed, it's less. I would say it's more. But 4% is a good common, good common midpoint. So if inflation is 4% and your bank is only paying you half a percent, you're losing 3.5% on this money by the end of the year. So if you just leave it and let it hang out, the next year you're down 7%. The next year you're down 10.5%. Four years later, right, now you're down and a half, three and a half, 14% off the money you saved. It's it's still there, but it's worth less every year. And if you leave it there long enough, it's actually worthless. So if you move it into a high yield account, now you're at least beating inflation. And if you hear that tinkling in the background, that's a cat doing something. And it's always concerning when I hear it in another room and I'm doing something else. Um, but strategy. So there's got to be more than just saving money. So what I'm detailing, and this is stuff to be posted. So what I'm detailing on my Facebook group is an actual 12 step system of how to go about getting to financial freedom so that my dreams, which may or may not be the same as your dreams, right? But how we can all go about navigating the system to financial freedom. And that's where strategy looks in. So this can be part of your strategy, but it's not the whole strategy. It can just be one step in the right direction. Or if I, if I relate this more to, to nautical terms, it's that next waypoint on your journey. So it's like save 20 grand and then I need to do this with it. And then when I get that done, I need to do this, right? As opposed to just save 20 grand and hang out. And that's why I say it's bad advice because Great savings challenge. They don't give you anything else. So, gosh, in a, in a fictitious world, we can all save this much money every week. I cannot fathom saving $800 a week. I cannot fathom saving $800 a week. Um, it, it blows my mind. And maybe it's possible, but it, it blows my mind that somebody could save that much money a week, which is why I think this is just an example. And you and I could all make this and be like, hey, look what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the savings challenge. And it's completely impossible to do. So you feel defeated halfway through and you know you're not going to reach 20 grand. Now, at one point, I will say, at one point, we scrimped and saved and we saved 10 grand in a year. 
and really cut down on our spending. I mean, maybe, let's see, 20, maybe seven years ago, we scripted and saved, and we saved 10 grand in a year. Cats, cats, cats. Uh, and then had to fix our foundation, and there went the 10 grand. And then the next year, we did the same thing. We scrimped and saved, and we made it work. And we saved 10 grand and went to California and Disneyland. And we saved that 10 grand with the purpose of going to Disneyland and not having to say no. Um, so it's possible to save several thousand dollars pending your budget, pending your income. But I, I can't, I really can't. Like, I, I cannot imagine saving that much in a week when my daughter was in daycare her daycare was like 950 a month and when she stopped going to daycare that 950 bonus back was amazing but as kids get older and expenses go up that 950 just kind of evaporates now, could we maybe find it and scrounge it and figure it out? Oh, yeah. Could we cut our spending? Oh, yeah. But could we cut our spending this much? Heck no. This just seems fictitious. Or maybe it was from somebody's lifestyle 20 years ago when it was a lot more feasible. But you don't know because there's no date. So, um, yeah, it's an interesting goal. But it, the goal by itself doesn't help you. If it's a waypoint on the journey and it serves a greater purpose and it plays into your overall st strategy for whatever's next, that's different. So that I'm just going to leave it there because otherwise I'll keep rambling and just keep saying the same stuff. So, uh, gosh, w one more financial meme. And if you saw the board, there are 467 total. I think that I've done 17 videos. Maybe this is the this is the nineteenth meme video, so that leaves almost four hundred and sixty more to go. So uh, if you like the content, consider subscribing to my channel, uh, hit the like button, and then head over to Facebook and join my group there called Navigate Your Finances. The information will be below. Uh, regardless of what you're up to, regardless of your strategy, regardless of your financial freedom goals, just remember you are the captain of your ship. You have the power, and it's a lot of power. You have the power to change your life and your financial future. Many people will offer to help you. There are 467 and counting financial memes, and the vast majority of them are complete BS. Some good, like a hint of truth. Like any myth, there's a hint of truth, a grain of truth there. But the vast majority are, are just not helpful. So many people will offer to help. You You have to be really good at figuring out who's going to help you and who's not, who's not going to help you. And then you have to make the choice to follow the people that are going to help you. And I completely get this video and this structure falls into just more online financial advice. So I hope it's beneficial to you. And it's not just something you'll pass away going, man, that doesn't help me at all. So wh whatever you're up to, make it happen. Shock your world. This is Daniel Young signing off. I will see y'all on another video. Bye-bye.